Hello friends, my name is Michelle and welcome to today's video. Today I will be talking about some of my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. If you remember, I did a similar video back in January where I talked about new releases from January to June of 2021. So I thought, you know what, let me sit down and compile some of my anticipated releases for July to December and talk about them. These are not all the books I am interested in. I know there are a lot more books coming out and I know that I will probably be reading those books as well and probably missing out on a few of these like it happened with the <laughs> first half of the year. But I figured I could talk to you about some of the most anticipated ones that I have very high on my list. There will be a few books that I will not be able to tell you anything about. This has a couple reasons. The first one being if it's a thriller or a sci-fi or anything with a sci-fi slash thriller vibe, chances are I don't want to know anything about it. That's just how I go into those books. Like, I will hear buzzword, I will hear someone talk about it greatly or someone else anticipating, or I will look at the cover and I will really like the vibe and that's it. Talking about vibe, that's probably the second reason why I won't be able to tell you much about some of these books. I just love the vibe. Or it's by an author that I've already read and I'm just ready to read whatever else they are publishing, you know? So those are like the three main reasons. Um, genre, vibe and author, why I would not be able to tell you anything about the books, but I will be linking all the books down below. So if you are interested in any of the ones that I cannot tell you much about, they're down there. <laughs> so you can go check them out. For July, the first book I want to talk about is The Taking of Jake Livingstone, also known as Jake in the Box. This is by Ryan Douglas and I've already read this <laughs> actually because it's uh, I'm filming this halfway through July, so I've already read this. This is about Jake who is a medium, which means that he can see ghosts, he can see how they perished from the world and then one day he becomes haunted by this uh, school shooter. And it's about that and also his uh, identity, his uh, mental health, everything combined. This is also our Spooky Bitches book club pick for July, so you should definitely get on that one, if nothing else, okay? Okay. The next one we will talk about is The River Has Teeth by Erica Waters. This I want to read because uh, everyone is recommending Ghostwood Song to me, also by Erica Waters. I haven't read that one, but it kind of automatically put this one on my TBR and all I know about this one is uh, that it's about Natasha, whose sister is missing and she knows that she will do anything to find her. I know it also incorporates magic, I know it's queer, and that is all I know. But it sounds incredibly cool. The cover is probably one of my favorite covers of the year. It looks absolutely stunning. And yeah you should check it out. Next we have my most anticipated release of this half of the year and that's uh, She Who Became the Sun. This one I know nothing about. I, don't, I know that at some point I knew everything about it but the plot kind of just like fizzled out of my brain because obviously I haven't read it yet so there's not much to latch onto for my brain. I know that I've been following the author for on Twitter for a very long time and I enjoy their presence very much in the online sphere and I know that this is one of those books that gives me the vibe. Okay so we are moving on to August. The first August book I want to talk about is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This is another one where I will not be able to tell you anything about it. All I know is that it's horror, so it definitely falls under the genres where I don't know anything about it going into it, and I prefer it that way. I also know that this is an author I will auto-buy and auto-read, because I have read a couple, a few of uh, Stephen Graham Jones' other books, and I enjoyed every single one of them. I've read three, and all of them are a really good time. My favorite so far is probably... Night of the Mannequins, something about it just spoke to me, but I'm really excited about My Heart is a Chainsaw and like about everything else that he's ever published, so he's definitely one of those where uh, genre mixes with the author that I will just want to read anything by, but I don't know much about it. But if I can tell you, you should check this out because Stephen Graham Jones is probably the best horror writer out there right now. Okay, the next one that we have is Velvet Was the Night, which is a mystery thriller and it also means that I know close to nothing about it. This is by uh, Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I read Mexican Gothic and I really enjoyed most of it, so I definitely want to check this out. This is another historical novel, but it's a mystery thriller and I know that it's a noir. 
Okay, it's noir and it's uh, full of anti-heroes. I know it's set in the 1970s and I know that it's set in Mexico City and if it's anything like Mexican Gothic, I know that I will enjoy the atmosphere and I know that I will enjoy the commentary that this will offer. So I'm really excited for this one. Also, the cover is absolutely fucking stunning. Another one that you just kind of want to eat when you look at it because it just looks so good. Then we have A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I discovered Victoria Lee not so long ago I read The Fever King by them and I also ordered The Electric Air. It's up here and I'm definitely also excited for A Lesson in Vengeance. So this is a mix of author, obviously, but it's also a genre and uh, it's a dark academia novel. But because it's a dark academia novel, again, I don't know that much about it because like I said, the second there's like an element of mystery, I just don't want to know. So it's the other factors that are very important to me. And I know that Victoria Lee uh, can write really interesting and complex characters who are not like other characters, you know? Who, are, who kind of stand out to you when you read the book, at least uh, that's my experience from The Fever King. So I'm really excited for A Lesson in Vengeance. I know that there are a couple books uh, that are in the Dark Academia Veen that are coming out in August and in the second half of the year, but this is definitely the one that I am the most excited for because, I don't know, it just sounds like the most intriguing one to me. The relationship and the, the way the school is described and the way it incorporates witchcraft Sign me up for all of that shit, like, I'm really excited for that one. I cannot wait to read it, honestly. And again, we have a beautiful cover, which I think goes with the Dark Academia vibe and mixed with witchcraft amazingly well, so... I'm just all around fucking stoked for this one. Another August one is A Snake Falls to Earth, which is a sophomore novel by Darcy Little Badger. I read LSO last year for Indigiton, which I am stoked for this year as well. But uh, this is uh, her second novel and I am really excited for it. First of all, the cover is so... I don't want to say adorable because it's not the right word, but it's just so... it gives me such a vibe. It's amazing. This is uh, about Nina, who is a lipping girl, and then uh, about Ollie, who is a cottonmouth. And uh, they don't know that the other one exists, but then a catastrophic event and a sickness that befalls uh, Ollie's best friend kind of draws them together. And that's honestly all I want to know. I really liked so many aspects of uh, El Lazoe. It was my favorite book of the year, but it really drew me in with a lot of aspects about it, and I thought that the writing was really solid. And I'm really excited to see what happens in uh, this sophomore novel. If if you want uh, to be both educated but also introduced to a really amazing world that is full of magic and just uh, introduced to writing that's really powerful and uh, really unique, then I would recommend this. I don't, I haven't even read it yet and I'm recommending it because I know, I just know that it's going to be really great. So. <laughs> I would check it out if I were you, I know I will. The next one uh, that we have is I think the last August one, there were quite a few for August, and this is uh, The Dead and the Dark by Courtney Gold. I know it's a kind of a horror -y, thr thriller -y vibe to it, I know that much, beautiful cover, but what really convinced me that I wanted to read this, because I have known about the existence of this book for about a year, I think, or ever since the cover was revealed, whenever that was, I have a really bad memory, but I was interested, but I was, got convinced and persuaded that I really wanted to read this when Wheezy read it, I think towards the beginning of the year, and absolutely adored it. And I was like, hmm, the love I feel <laughs> from Wheezy for this book convinced me that I need to check it out as well. So I will be doing that. It immediately uh, bumped it up my <laughs> anticipated releases list, like like crazy. So I'm really excited for this one. So I can I tell you more about it? But I told you, I told, I warned you. I warned you, I warned you that this was not gonna be a very informative video. For September, I have Iron Widow. Iron Widow, I think, uh, got onto everyone's anticipated release uh, list for the second half of 2021 because the author is just a delight. So Iron Widow is by Sharon J. Zhao and uh, they are, at least I've been following them on Twitter for a long time. I found them last year, like many people did, when they were doing their review on Mulan, the live action Disney movie, uh, which was... Um, informative and also really great. So I think m many people found them at that point and uh, now they're coming out with a book and I cannot wait. I don't know much about it. Again, the cover is fucking beautiful. Uh, what I know about it is that it's kind of Pacific Rim meets The Handmaid's Tale. This is uh, all I know about <laughs> this title. And you know what? I think Pacific Rim is one of the greatest movies ever made. Not the sequel. The sequel was fucking trash in my opinion, but that's just me. And I fucking uh, love The Handmaid's Tale, at least uh, parts of it. So... 
this sounds like a good time uh that's all i know and i also know that i love a lot of the fun art that they share on their twitter from time to time or the official art pieces that they have commissioned all are a vibe okay a vibe another um september release that i'm really excited for and i didn't even know that it was coming out until i was researching september releases i don't know how i missed this but somehow i did and that's a uh, harlem shuffle by colson whitehead so if you don't know the nickel boys is probably one of my favorite books of all time that book made my jaw drop to the floor ever since then i just uh, want to read everything by colson whitehead and when i found out that he was having a new book out this september i was like count me and I didn't even know but this is like Christmas come early so Harlem Shuffle I know is about a family who is kind of tied on money and uh, I know it's set in New York in the 1960s I don't know if it's a completely realistic New York or if it's a play on the New York of the 1960s and I know that it's kind of a exploration of the family and of the society and culture in that time but it's also kind of a crime novel so I already know that there's gonna be some kind of uh, plot twist or there's gonna be some kind of craft or some kind of... Some people might call it gimmick, but I think it's perfect craft, you know, this kind of um, experimental something that's gonna be put into it or just some beautiful writing that is going to be incor incorporated and I absolutely cannot wait to read this. I am literally so excited. Okay, another September release is The City Beautiful which uh, is a thriller and I don't know much about it. I will admit to you that uh, I read uh, a, the plot a few months ago. I don't remember much of it anymore because like I said, a really bad memory. But uh, I know that Roger got me really stoked for this thanks to uh, his uh, handle on, <laughs> on Twitter, no, thanks to his username on Twitter. And uh, I know that I keep looking at it every time I come across it and I'm like, hmm, it sounds really great. All I uh, remember is that it's a thriller, so maybe that's why I didn't read too much into it. I mean, possibly, because like I said, I don't <laughs> like to know much about thrillers. But the cover is beautiful. I know it has uh, Jewish representation. I know that it's queer. And uh, I know that I definitely need to read more Jewish rap in books because uh, it's something that I have been slacking on previously. I'm trying to be better this year, but it's definitely something that I have been slacking on in the past year. So I'm trying to correct that. But outside of that, it just sounds incredible. And every single person who has read it that I've heard from literally loved this so much. So... I cannot wait to dive into it. It's one of those that uh, has an absolutely enticing cover. And if the book, knowing that it's a mystery slash thriller and it has this cover, it really gives me like such a Halloween vibe. So I'm really glad it comes out in September because I will be able to like read it towards uh, the spooky season. And I'm so fucking excited. Like I cannot even tell you how excited I am. The next one, we're still in September, is A Dark and Starless Forest by Sarah Hollowell. This I don't know anything about. It's the cover that completely sold me because you don't often see fat rap on book covers and I am living for it so hard. I know it's a fat fantasy i know it's young adult i know it's queer i know that i've been following sarah hollowell for quite a while on twitter again so many of these are just based on me following the authors on twitter but uh, so often they uplift uh, the voices that really like need uplifting and just sarah's opinions really speak to me so i'm really excited for this because like i said fat rep is really important to me and sarah seems like a great person and i really want to give this book a chance so that's really all i know and all i need to know you know sometimes you really just need to go with your gut so i'm gonna do that we're finally moving on to october with the death of jane lawrence this is a case of i know the author and i want to read everything by the author because this is by caitlin starling I read The Luminous Dead by Caitlin last year, absolutely adored it. It was uh, one of the most atmospheric reads that I have read in my recent memory. So when I saw this cover and I saw what it looks like and when I saw the details of it and I, it, I just love Caitlin. I just love Caitlin Starling. I love her writing. I trust her to deliver something horror something gothic, something amazing. So I'm really stoked to, to read this one, not gonna lie. Um, I know that Angel has an arc of this and I'm so jealous. I cannot even tell you how jealous I am. Guys, I'm sorry if the angle changed. I'm like dying here. <laughs> I needed to reposition myself. We have four more books to talk about. We are still in October. We're going to talk about Hunting the Stars by Sherry DeMoline. I have no idea what this is about and I don't want to know because this is the sequel to The Marrow Thieves, which I read earlier this year, I want to say, I think in February. And I really enjoyed this. This is about a post-apocalyptic world where people, white people specifically, lost the ability to dream. And uh, the only way that they can 
get their dreams back is from the marrow of indigenous peoples of North America. This is where it's centered. So they're essentially hunting them because white people, you know, they would. I really liked so many things about the Marrow Thieves. The only thing I didn't like was the pacing and I didn't like the ending much. I thought it was kind of rushed and then it left off at a, a little bit of an awkward place, I guess, for me at least. So I'm really excited that there's a sa sequel. Once I, when I finished the uh, Marrow Thieves, I didn't actually know that there was a sequel in the works. So I was really excited when I found out that there was because I feel like this is exactly what I need to really proclaim that this uh, duology or series, I don't even know, is up there for me, you know? I feel like I really needed a continuation because I felt like I really wanted more. So this is perfect for me. This is also the only <laughs> sequel on this list. Guys, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm really need to, I really need to look at the sequels of the things that I read, but it's just not happening and <laughs> but you know. You know. It's fine. It's fine. Another October release is uh, Nothing But Black and Teeth. I mean, look at this cover. This is a horror novel. It's very short. I know it's about a couple friends who before a wedding decide to stay at a haunted house. And when you look at the cover, you can kind of tell that some fucked up shit is gonna go down here. Like, what is that? I saw this cover and I was like, what the fuck is that? That looks so spooky and atmospheric and I want it a lot. So it made it onto my anticipated release list because like, what is that? That sounds like such pure horror and the plot as well and the cover really kind of pushes it at you as well. I'm really excited for that one. Oh, okay, I lied. I have another sequel <laughs> on this list. I have two sequels on this list. Okay, so we are in November and the book I want to talk about is Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Gann. This is the third book and the last book in the Girls of Paper and Fire trilogy. I've only read the first one, but I really fucking loved it. I'm really um, excited to read the second one. I hope it will happen soon because Girls of Fate and Fury comes out like 10 days before my birthday so it's like a birthday present to me specifically. Thank you so much. So I'm really um, stoked about this one. Girls of Paper and Fire is about this world where society is split into castes and our main character is Paper Case, which is the lowest case and she is taken into the palace to the Demon King. Demons are the higher, highest uh, upper caste, caste. I still don't know how to say that properly in English. It's okay. And she is taken into the palace to be one of the paper girls. The paper girls are essentially concubines to the king. So, you know, it's not a fun time. This book discusses rape very graphically and uh, very often. But the first book, it's by the way sapphic. I feel like I've been forgetting to say these representation things even though they matter. So if I forgot any, I will link them down below and list them down below. But this is sapphic and the main um, romance here that was happening in the first book, I feel like this is the YA fantasy romance that I want in my life, which just further proves that I just like any genre so long as it's queer. But <laughs> definitely really excited about Girls of Fate and Fury, so I figured I would just sell. Uh, Pop it on here, even though I haven't read the second one yet, but I'm really excited for the third one. Cannot wait to have the matching paperbacks. I'm so excited. But yeah. And the last book I want to talk to you about, I really don't have many November and December releases, but I have one December one, which is The Midnight Girls, which is by Alicia Yasinska. Again, I'm sorry, I just cannot say the last name in an English way because it's such a Polish name. And that's how we would say it here in this country. So I just, like, yes, I could say, like, Jasinska, but it just feels weird in my mouth, you know? because Slavic countries. I don't know what to tell you, man. And I don't know what this is about. This is honestly, I kind of feel like I have this one on my most anticipated list as a nod to my girlfriend who just fucking adored, um, what was it? What was it called? Something Tide? The, 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 the Dark Tide. I've been whispered to. It's called The Dark Tide. I didn't love it as much. I gave it three stars, but my girlfriend loved it. She gave it five stars. So I feel like this is kind of uh, my nod to my girlfriend in this video by putting it on this list. I know that she's very excited for it. And even though I didn't love The Dark Tide, I'm really interested to see what else the author can do because it's not like The Dark Tide was bad. It just didn't do my favorite thing at the end, which was not my, you know, it wasn't my favorite. But uh, I wonder if uh, the same thing will happen with this one. I feel like the author deserves uh, another chance for me because maybe it was just circumstance. Those are all the books that I wanted to talk to you about. I don't even know if that's a lot or if it's too few. I really don't know. I'm really confused. I feel like I just talked about 75 books, even though I maybe talked about like 10. I really don't know. So 
If you have any more books that are coming out in this half of the year, please talk to me about them in the comments down below. I would really love to know what you're anticipating or, you know, tell me what your most anticipated book of this half of the year is in general. Even if it's already on this list, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know. I'm literally dying to know. And uh, if you want to leave an emoji, uh, leave a fire emoji because all of these new releases are on fire. They all sound so fucking amazing, you know? So leave that in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed this i would really appreciate it and if you want to see more content please subscribe all of that really helps me it helps my <laughs> it helps my need for validation but it also <laughs> helps this channel so i would really appreciate it if you could do that and yeah if you want to be my friend anywhere else my socials are all linked down below please come be my friend i would love it and yeah thank you for watching this i hope you enjoyed it and that's all from me for now and in true ellen ripley fashion i am signing off